Anybody who follows us on Instagram might have seen this a few weeks ago. So I just called my wife to see if my red Telecaster was at home. And it's not, and she's been through everything. So at the moment, the only place that hasn't been searched is my boot, the boot of my car. If my telly is not in the boot of my car, I don't know where my telly is. Thanks, pal. That's right, I thought red had been stolen. Turns out I'm just a bit forgetful. But this is a really big deal to me because I have had a very special guitar stolen in the past. It was a 1964 L-Series Strat that was stolen from my lockup in Sydney 20 years ago. But it did make me think, what are the best ways that we can keep our gear safe? To look into this further, I'm gonna need some help from a couple of friends. This is Sergeant Rich Faye from the Wiltshire Police. And this is Poohhead. I don't want to wear the poo. Jake, you have to wear the poo. <sighs> Fine. So let's take a look at the thief who just seizes an opportunity to take our gear in the hope to make some quick cash. One of the big things is, is keep it out of view. You know, if people can't see it, they don't know it's there. I know, for example, guitarists have these beautiful guitars they like to put out on stands in their living rooms, but all it takes is someone to peer through your window when you're not at home to see those instantly recognise that you know they're, they're valuable and worth money, that's all they look for. They look for the opportunity then and there. There's no planning, they see the opportunity and they take it. So minimising the possibility of this sort of theft is just about removing the temptation. It's simple things like keeping your gear out of sight. Don't leave your gear in the car overnight. It does seem like common sense stuff, but I certainly know that I'm guilty of it. But what about the thief that is specifically targeting your gear, the premeditated theft? How can we possibly guard against that? Sadly, if somebody wants to get into your home, then they, they're going to be able to. Sure. Uh, uh, you know, with, with windows and with windows and the like, it's not impossible to completely protect your property. Right. But what you've got to try and do is make it as difficult as you can for them to do so. Technology can be your best friend here. Um, you have CCTV cameras now that that are motion detector um, linked up to your mobile telephone. Uh, can I help you? Uh, I'm just in the house, you need your gut ring, please, maybe? Is that Poohhead? Um, what are you I'm doing, Poohhead? What are you doing? For a couple of hundred pounds at the most, you can pick up these cameras that will sync to your phones. Um, they will let you know if there is motion detected in your home, and they will give you a live feed from your camera to your mobile phone. Now, if you view that and there's someone on your property, you can immediately call 999, and you can get police to your property within a couple of minutes. That's the best opportunity. I think we will have a, a detaining somebody within your property. So this is all about being prepared. One day your gear may be stolen. Okay, what do we do? Step one, keep the receipt. We have to plan for the eventuality, which we hope will never happen, mm. that the items are going to be taken. So the first thing you need to do, um, when you pur purchase a, a, a piece of musical equipment, um, keep that receipt. I think it's really important to have a, oh, an, an audit nice. trail um, for that piece of equipment. So if uh, it was ever unfortunately stolen, which we hope it never would be, but if it was, then we've got we've got a proof of purchase um, and we've got a document to show that we were the owner of that item. Right. Um, the next thing we would always encourage people to do is, is to, to take out an insurance policy. Now mm -hmm. that doesn't stop the item from being stolen and I, I appreciate there's a lot of personal sentiment attached to a lot of these, these items, but you know, if you if you have a whole vehicle of, of equipment stolen, at least you've got some some cover there. Take photographs of all your um, of all your items, uh, all your pieces of equipment. Um, that would include not just a front shot, but also the sides, the backs, in particular any any um, distinctive markings or details upon your um, piece of equipment. It's essential to record the serial numbers. I appreciate that not all um, pieces of musical equipment have serial numbers, but if they are there record them, all the UK police services and um, use the Immobilise website to search uh, and try and track and identify stolen property. So the Immobilise.com website is really interesting. It's a free resource that allows you to upload all of the information about your gear, including photographs and serial numbers, and it keeps it all in one location. And it's a database that gets used by the police should anything get stolen. But also, if something is registered as stolen, 
places like uh, cash converters and any secondhand reseller uses that data to check for stolen goods. You can upload as much gear as you like, and once you've uploaded all that information, you can then download a PDF that keeps all the information together so that you quickly have access to all the information to pass on to the police should you need to. There is some really interesting tech out there that can help us keep track of our stuff. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Tools and products that you can purchase online. Mm -hmm. um, there, there is um, UV pens, They're obviously a very basic idea, but if you're willing to, to, to mark your uh, equipment with a UV pen, invisible to the naked eye, however with a UV light, um, w which we will routinely look at stolen items uh, under, um, you can obviously write a postcode, your name, your address, um, on your piece of equipment. These are tile Bluetooth trackers. Now, obviously, you're gonna have trouble putting them on your guitar, but they will go into your guitar case easy enough. These work with an app within your phone, and as long as these are within the range of the Bluetooth on your phone, you can track them, and they will give you a last location. Now, these are not to be confused with a GPS tracker, because once they leave the Bluetooth range on your phone, they cannot be tracked live. However, they do have a very cool trick up their sleeve. These work with what's like a hive mind. We are Borg. You will be assimilated. If anyone else using the Tile app walks past one of these trackers, the location of the tracker will be instantly updated and sent to your phone. Lots of people use these with luggage, and there are stories of luggage being lost and people walking past them in Tibet and suddenly the luggage is found. Uh, the batteries in these last about six months, and there are a couple of different sorts. Uh, this type here, you can replace the battery yourself, or the ultra slim type, uh, the battery needs to be replaced by the guys at Tiles, but they send you a replacement and you send the original tile back. So next is the GPS Live Tracker. This can be tracked using your mobile phone anywhere in the world. Um, it's a bit bigger, it does require a SIM card to be operational, and the battery will only last about two weeks. Now this is very interesting. This is an RFID tag, or a radio frequency identification tag. It uh, doesn't require any batteries uh, and can slip underneath the scratch plate in your guitar. And every RFID tag has its own unique identification number. So the issue with these is they're not widely used for theft prevention. They're mainly used for things like stock control. However, the police are starting to scan for RFID tags, so I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot more of these in the future. Okay, the worst has happened. Whether it's been opportunistic or whether it's been premeditated, our gear has been taken. <laughs> So what's the first thing that we do? If it's still a crime in progress, so it's, if it's a, a theft or a burglary that's just occurred and there's a good opportunity for us to catch the criminals then and there, you call 999 straight away. So 999 is the UK um, emergency number. Uh, you request for police, you give as much information as you can, okay? If you've seen the suspect, we need as a detailed description of the suspect as you can provide. That is crucial because when we're responding to an, an incident, especially during the day, for example, there are lots of people out and about. Um, if we can get a really good detailed description, it can aid us massively. Again, when you're reporting the crime to us, make sure you provide us with as much information in regards to the items that's been stolen. Um, so hopefully you have your serial numbers, mm -hmm. etc. Pass them as, as soon as you can, because then we can input that information onto our onto our police database. Um, and if anybody was stopped or a house was searched subsequently, um, and your property was in there, we would check our databases, um, and the serial number would prop would pop up on our systems as, as it being stolen property. I think it's important to, for people to understand that if a crime is reported, it doesn't automatically mean that you will get a police response to your incident. Mm -hmm. So say for example, you have a piece of equipment stolen from your vehicle, there are no witnesses, there are, there are no CCTV opportunities, and the call taker you speak to doesn't think there's an opportunity uh, for forensic for the recovery of forensic mm -hmm. evidence, it's unlikely you will see a police officer. We will still record your, your crime, um, and if there are further lines of inquiry identified, we will investigate it, but we will not automatically send a police off to, to every crime scene. And sure. I think it's important because there are simply not enough police officers for us to do that, unfortunately. So if you are prepared and your gear does get stolen, you do stand a decent chance of getting it back, but you need to be vigilant with this stuff. You need to contact the police and give them all the relevant information, mark your gear as stolen. You need to be on eBay and on Reverb, Gumtree, uh, on social media, the whole idea of this is you need to make it as difficult as possible for the thief to sell your gear on. If you are a victim of a, of a crime, 
you know, have a look around you if it's to, uh, you know, if your house has been broken into or if your vehicle's been broken into, have a look around the area to where the crimes occurred. Are there CCTV cameras on the outside of houses? If there are, that's really, really important to pass on to the police um, because it will increase um, the chances of the police coming to the scene. You know, we will seize that evidence, we will review that CCTV evidence and obviously increases the chances of, of, of detecting your crime and, and apprehending the criminal. You know, speak speak to your neighbours if you, if you if your home's been broken into. Speak to your neighbours. What did they see? The police will do it as a matter of course. But if you do that nice and early, and you identify early lines of inquiry from being proactive, it, it may speed up the the investigation and, and help recovering your property as well. The resale outlets are normally very good. They're very very they work in line um, alongside of police, mm -hmm. and they will notify us if stolen property is brought into them. But again. It's imperative that if you can get that information to them as soon as quickly as you can, then it increase, increases the chances of your property being returned. There are loads of cases of people who've been vigilant and have actually found their gear online. So should that happen, what's the first thing that we need to do? If you see your property online, you need to call the police straight away. Please don't make attempts to, to go and recover that property yourself. Let us know that you've, you think you've identified where your property is and, and send, the police will attend and recover that, that property and hopefully apprehend suspects as well at the same time. If you're to go banging on the door, you may risk people um, leaving the, the house from the back door, mm. never to be seen again, and you're still not recovering your property because you have no power to enter that address. So leave it to the police to do. There you go, I hope you got something out of that. Uh, I wanna say a massive thank you to Sergeant Rich Fay from the Wiltshire Police, and also to my mate Jake Wilcock for being poo head. Uh, my Strat was stolen 20 years ago and it is still a raw nerve and I genuinely hope that you never have to experience that. So remember, prevention is always better than cure. But be prepared and should the worst happen, be proactive and you know you stand a good chance of getting your stuff back. Okay guys, uh, have a great day and hope to see you soon. Bye. <laughs>